Get it out of you. Come on. Boot and rally. You'll feel better. What happened to this thing? What's, what's the story here? That's an excellent question. So as we saw in the last video, this uh, LS7's got a big old window in the block, stuff everywhere. And I think it's about time we found out what happened and uh, what good parts there are, if any. So got the car over in this bay today. Ultimately, we're gonna have to put it on the lift to uh, remove the motor, but got the bends on there for some other work. That's gonna be in another video. But for right now, we can start the disassembly and uh, inspection right here in this bay. This is all exactly how we left it last time. Coils are off, uh, intake couplers off so we could see the metal in the intake. But other than that, 100% complete, untouched LS7, ready for inspection, ready to see what the carnage probably on that side is gonna be. So let's get right into it. Let's get to work, start tearing down this thing. First thing's gonna be taking off this hood to give us more room to work. And then we'll be pulling off the LS7 intake manifolds and uh, seeing what we can see through there. And then ultimately take the, I might take the heads off right here, even though the whole motor has to come out, just so we can see. I'm gonna have to take all these accessories off, but we'll see how far I get before I check in with you guys. For now, let's get the hood off, get the intake off, some of the you know intake components so we can see into the intake ports, see if we can see any damage. Alrighty guys, making quick progress. Got the air intake off, uh, most of the PCV system disconnected and the intake manifold off, which I've got over here on the bench and we can get a closer look at what I showed you guys in the last video. Carnage, part one. So this is untouched. I just unbolted the throttle body to show you guys. What a disaster and you can see there's a Small reservoir of coolant in there. I oh, that's a piston ring, the oil ring right there. Yep, what a mess. So, the right thing to do is probably just to buy a new intake manifold. Up, you know, you probably could clean all this out, but at the cost of a ten thousand dollar motor, is it really worth risking missing, you know, something like this way in the back there, and then ruining your other brand new motor? So we'll probably be on the lookout for an LS7 intake manifold as well. So there's that. Also interesting to note, similar to the AMG, uh, the LS7 was a hand-built motor. So uh, every motor was signed or printed with the guy's name who built it. So in this case, Greg Jones, thank you for the glorious LS7. You did a great job. It made it 36,000 miles before it ate itself. It was a good time up until now though, I'm sure. Also, got some coolant in the valley there. That's not the end of the world, but what do we have down there? That looks like a ring, probably wedged in, in the valve there. That one looks okay. That one is, let me see if I can get a better light on these. There we go. That one's full of oil. That one's got a little piece of metal. 
Man, it's hard to get you guys in there to see. Sorry about that. There's a little piece of metal chilling on that one. What about this side? Everything looks okay over here. But yeah, there's... Let's see if we can fish that out, maybe. Nope, that thing is definitely wedged in the valve, but that is 100% piston ring. So, we'll see that when the head comes off. So yeah, that's what we got so far. Next, um, I think we'll probably drain the coolant. There's probably no coolant left in the motor. I think honestly, we'll uh, just start pulling the heads. And we're obviously gonna start with the bad side because that's where most of the destruction is gonna be. So, gotta undo this exhaust manifold then start pulling the head bolts off. Not that it matters for this particular application, but quick tip for you guys that are pulling aluminum heads, just as you would torque heads from the inside out, when you're removing them or untorquing them, do the opposite, outside in, and you prevent yourself from warping the head as you're removing it, because you can warp aluminum heads if you just kind of went in here with the impact and just zipped all these out, you know, not in an even manner. So outside in, little by little, you should be all right. Drink up, little buddy. That'll help with the pain. Ooh. See that? Six, say, uh... All right, guys, quick change of plans. It's a couple days later. Um, I forgot that you need to remove the exhaust in order to get to the cylinder head bolts. Um, so we can't remove this head without removing the exhaust. In order to remove the exhaust, I'd like to get it up in the air. Can't get it up in the air because the bends is tied up on the lift. So until that's freed up, uh, I'd like to focus on doing the other things we'll have to do to get the engine out anyways, which is mainly moving all the accessories here, probably pulling the fan out, and uh, anything else we can do up top here so that by the time we get over the lift, this thing will just pop right out or we can get the exhaust off. Maybe take a look at the head before we pull the motor. Who knows? But either way, basically all of this stuff needs to come off. And we can do that right here while it's on the ground. So let's focus on that. All right, so we got most of the front accessories off. Basically everything that needs to come out of a C6 in order for you to remove the engine. Water pump, power steering, bracket, alternator bracket, which is the giant thing that was up here. This power steering pulley bracket assembly in the C6s and probably the C5s too is a pain in the ass. Everything is so tight in here. There's four 13 millimeter bolts down here that are such a pain to get to, but I've done it a few times now, so it's slightly less painful, but still big headache. Anyways, that's basically all that needs to come out. Fans out, all the rad hoses are disconnected. There was still coolant in the radiator, so I drained that. Um, ABS pump is loose, all this stuff over here is loose, so 
You can see the motor is much more accessible now. So basically everything that we need to do now is, is more under the car. Like I said, remove the exhaust, then we'll loosen the bell housing bolts. And then in the C6s and C5s and probably C7s as well, you basically need to lower the cradle a little bit in order, you can see the balancer is basically right up against the steering rack. So you have two options. You can either lower the cradle or slide the rack out. I find it's easier to lower the cradle and then just uh, pull the motor forward, up and out. But all that needs to be done. You know, I could fight on my back and do some of it now, but I'm just gonna wait till the lift is open and uh, it'll be much easier. So we're gonna put this aside for a day or two while I finish up my work on the, on the bends. In the meantime, here's all the parts we got off so far, kind of stuffed in this corner. You guys know me, I like to label my, my bolts and parts and put them in organized bags so I know right where they go including the stupid power steering bracket. So those bolts aren't gonna get lost. Here's our LS7 intake manifold carnage. You guys already saw that. Here's what I found so far. This one's a new addition. This is definitely our exhaust valve, which is that spring that's sticking up over there. You can see this thing a uh, little, bit, little bit beat up, probably could be reused, but also found this. I believe this is a piston. We'll, uh, we'll investigate that a little bit more later. This is the original piece I showed you guys, and this is just more chunks from the intake manifold. There's still more down there. I'm sure we'll find a lot more once we pull the motor, but this is our body count so far. But yeah, I gotta wait to free up that lift, so I'll see you guys in a day or two, and uh, we'll get right to work pulling the exhaust, pulling off the other stuff we need to, and uh, getting this motor out. Nope, still not on the left. So, a couple days later, the Mercedes is still fighting me, and uh, so now I'm waiting on more parts. I don't feel like waiting any longer. I wanna get working on this red car. So, Mercedes is gonna stay on the lift. You guys will see that in a future video, all the work we're doing to that thing. Uh, move this into the third bay here. A lot more room to work up front. And uh, we're gonna do this the old fashioned way. Get this thing up on jack stands, get under it, get the exhaust unhooked, bell housing bolts, all the stuff we need to do under there. And uh, you know, do it on our backs. We're gonna get this motor out the top the old fashioned way. Not ideal when you get a lift right there, but you know, sort of pushing two dead cars around. I mean, I've done this on my back before. Getting back to my roots, you know, the days before I had this lift. Uh, so it shouldn't be too bad. So yeah, we gotta get the exhaust off. Uh, a couple connections down there, bell housing bolts, that kind of stuff. We need to drop the subframe. Then we should be able to tilt this thing up and bring it out. So that's what we're going to be working on the next day or so. I don't know how much time I'll have to work on it tonight, but definitely tomorrow as well. But for you guys, it'll be the next minute or so. So let's get this motor out.
We got quite the pile of parts amassed here. Just about everything removed that we need to, I think. Exhaust manifolds, cats, dry sump tank. This is all stuff that came out of the exhaust. So, you know, just add that to our, our pile of parts here. We'll put it all together at the end. But this stuff alone was basically between the manifold and the catalytic converter. So, shot. This is part of the block or piston, I think. More piston ring right there. Good stuff. But all that's out. Got a bunch done on the car over here. Dry sump tank is out. A arms are disconnected on both sides in preparation for dropping the subframe. AC compressor is unbolted so we can leave the entire AC system in and charged. Starters out, all starter connections. Uh, all our cooler hoses down there are unbolted from the block. Got all the bell housing bolts, top and bottom. Bottom ones are super tight against the transmission tunnel, but we got it done. Oil drain, there was about a gallon of coolant on top of the oil. That's all in our drain pan there. Sway bar is unbolted in preparation for dropping the subframe. Took one of those sway bar brackets to the mouth earlier, so that was fun. Um, yeah. I think we're basically at the point where we can uh, get ready to get this motor out of here. So how I typically do this is obviously bring the engine crane over, pick this thing out from the top, uh, like I said, first we have to drop the subframe so the ABS bracket is loose so that everything can basically just drop down. Then we can pull the motor forward off the uh, input shaft to the torque tube and then out. And that usually involves me supporting the subframe with my motorcycle jack and then typically a smaller jack kind of in from the side supporting the torque tube so that there's no pressure on the torque tube. This thing hopefully should slide right out. So yeah, let's get our jack set up drop the subframe, get the load leveler hooked up, get this thing yanked out. I don't think there's supposed to be 
piston ring on your drain plug for your oil pan or whatever that is. But what do I know? Anyways, she's out. Fought me a little bit. I uh, could have sworn I had all of the bell housing bolts out. But if you count these up right here, there's eight of them. I thought there was seven. Turns out GM hid that little guy right there, which is conveniently under that wiring harness. So I was yanking on this thing for 30 minutes before I realized I had forgotten one. I'm sitting down there like, wow, it's almost like there's a bolt I forgot. Sure enough, you'd think after I've done enough of these C6s, I would have known. I almost thought about looking back at some pictures to see just that, but was too lazy. Anyways, got that out, yanked this thing out pretty easy. Whole cradle is dropped down. AC compressor is still in and all charged up. Uh, even with the big Harbor Freight jab over there, still had to quickly remove the front bumper, no big deal. So yeah, this stuff's all just kind of chilling out. Um, real dirty in here. Definitely gonna end up pressure washing and cleaning all this up, but transmission spins freely, sounds good. There's more stuff down here. We're gonna have to clean this out at some point, but here's another big chunk. Just put that back for now. Aluminum everywhere, look at all that. Absolute carnage. Speaking of carnage, Got the old LS7 paperweight on the engine stand here. You know, if you were to do a quick lap around this thing, same as in the car, it looks pretty darn good. But, you know, we all know that, as I mentioned in my first video, oh, what do we got there? So I'm gonna pull these off. We'll get a better look at this uh, aftermarket window on the block here. So we'll do that first, then we'll pull the heads, and then we'll disassemble the bottom end, get this thing completely blown apart, see what parts, if any, are good. Already pulled the clutch off, that thing looked really nice. And uh, since you can't do it on the engine stand, obviously I pulled the rear main cover off. Um, there's a TSP cam in there as well, so we'll see if that's any good. Excited to try out my new uh, engine stand drip tray, as it's already paying for itself here. Those of you guys who had torn apart a motor, blown up or not, you know, it makes a mess on the floor, even though my floor is already kind of dirty right now. You know, you're going to lose coolant, oil, every fluid you can imagine. And uh, this thing should help to catch that. Yeah, let's get right to work. Let's get these brackets off, see the hole in the block, pull the head off, and uh, let's see some carnage, you know. Normally, if I hadn't already financially accepted that I'm going to have to put an entire motor in this thing, or, you know, if I was the one who blew it up, this might be kind of painful. But when you've already financially committed to spending the money on a brand new everything, it might be kind of fun to see uh, what kind of carnage we got in here. Hello? Anybody home? Oh! <laughs> oh, man. Oh, this is gnarly, boys. There's two holes. Couldn't see any of this behind the AC compressor bracket, but there is your wrist pin, rod. This right here is your liner. Oh man, that's loose. Wonder. Yeah, this is your cylinder liner. Could fall right out right now. I think I just wedged it up in there. The cylinder liner is just hanging out. Look at all that stuff in there. This is gnarly. Look at this. I don't think you're supposed to be able to see that. You can see the exhaust valve is just not there. But we already knew that because it's on the workbench. But this is going to be good. This is some nasty stuff right here. All right. Let's get the uh, passenger head off. See what we see. Ooh. Oh, buddy, that's a lot of damage. That's a lot of damage. Yikes. See? I told you. I told you this thing was worth the money. One of these things is not like the other. Somebody call Phil Swift because that's a lot of damage. <laughs> no, that's a lot of damage. 
This is just, I have never seen anything like this. What the boys over at NASA call that? Rapid unplanned disassembly or rapid unscheduled disassembly. That's what our LS7 here experienced. The entire cylinder wall is just gone. And this is, you can see how thin these cylinder walls are on the LS7 or the sleeves. This whole thing could pull right out. Yep. And there we go. There's your wrist pin, crank. Oh man. This is sweet. This is crazy. I've never seen an engine blown up like this, but I guess, you know, could be worse. Most of the parts stayed in the motor, but rod is still free, moving back and forth. There's some debris down there. Maybe the crank could be saved with a, you know, turn or something, who knows, but another crack right there. What's interesting is that the piston is just completely gone. I mean, it, it's, I guess it's not completely gone. It's probably in the oil pan and on the workbench here, some right there. There's probably still some more down in the bottom of the K member we haven't fished out there, but it's just not here. <laughs> Checked out. So other than that, these cylinder walls looked like in the, the other cylinders anyways, they were in good shape. But look at this, just completely blew out right here, got into the lifter valley, pushed this tray up. Be curious to see if we can get those lifters out, but wow, pretty darn good. Here's the head. There's that uh, ring that we were trying to grab from the other side. Intake valve is intact. When the valves drop, in most cases, not all, but in most cases, it's the intake valve because that's the hollow one. Here's our exhaust valve, or the stem anyways. There's where this one went. Yeah, she's mint. A little polished. This will this will clean right up. No problem. Just tuck that back down. Good to go. But uh, yeah, this you know this always begs the question: chicken or the egg? Did this valve drop and uh, cause all this damage, or did a piston let go and hit the valve? We might find some more information once we get the bottom end apart, or we might never find out. Doesn't really matter, end result is the same, but you know, some of the naysayers of the LS7 valve issue would probably like to know. They'll probably say it was not the valve, it was something else, but like I said, the end result is the same. We got ourselves a paperweight LS7. I'm gonna pop this other head off. I'm sure that this side is probably fine, but we'll see. And we can flip this thing over, see what we can't salvage from the bottom end, maybe pull the bouncer off, get the cam out, go from there. You know what, I think we can rebuild this thing. This is a LS7 piston from a project a couple years ago. I think this thing will just drop right in there. Oh yeah, she's rebuilt. Good to go. Toss the head back on, back in the car. Passenger head is off. Nothing really to see here. Cylinder walls look excellent. Pistons look great. Nothing really happened over here, but when you have catastrophic damage like that, there's just stuff everywhere. Pulled out all 16 lifters, lifter trays. Also got the balancer off. Um, I was hoping that the cam might be good, and I was thinking it might be. I pulled out 15 lifters. They all look good. All the rollers look good. Got to the last one. Yikes, that's not round. So I'm guessing that lobe of the cam is gonna be, you might even be able to see it right there. I think the cam might be junk too. Oh well, 
Got all our valve train organized here for no reason at all. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think now I can pull this timing cover off, we'll pull the cam out, take a look at it, and we can flip this thing over and look at the bottom end, and then we're pretty much done, just as I suspected. Don't think there's many good parts here, but like I said, we already knew that. I just can't get over this. Crazy. All right, let's keep going. Well, like I said, I think, I think we found the piston. It's just everywhere. Even the uh, cam sensor got some of it. Nice. There's more piston rings. Sounds like a baby's rattle. Oh yeah, she's toast. Don't even gotta be careful pulling it out then. Damn, you know, it's really too bad. Cause other than this first lobe right here, this thing is in really nice shape. It is. Texas Speed Stage 1 LS7 cam. And now it's garage art. Nice. You done? Is that it? <laughs> like burping a baby. Get it out of you. Come on. Boot and rally. You'll feel better. Not ideal. And I was hoping our oil pan might be good so we could recoup some money there, but. Add that to the scrap pile. Windage tray is. Blew a hole right through there.
Well, that's it. Nothing else I can take off this thing. That is our fully disassembled LS7. 95% junk parts. Do have to say though, I'm pretty happy with my purchase here. This thing has captured so much coolant and oil. Floor's still a little, little bit messy from puddles and stuff I've been stepping in, but normally this would all be on the floor. And uh, it caught almost all of it, so. If nothing else, pretty psyched about this thing. I'll leave a uh, link in the description for where I bought that. Here's our bare, destroyed LS7 block. Here's our pile of parts. The oil pump sounds like it's got a baby's rattle in it. That could never be reused. Um, unfortunately, the oil pan is junk. The LS7 oil pan is specific to the LS7. I was hoping we could maybe recoup some cash there, but big old hole in that. That's junk. Cam's junk. Windows tray is super done. Uh, you would never reuse timing components. They're cheap enough. Um, we have one good head, one really bad head. I mean, I, I think some guys have been able to fix those. Who knows? But one good head with bronze guides in it. Who knows? But uh, you might have a couple good rods there. Definitely not this one. Definitely not this one. But uh, there might be one or two good ones in there. I'll probably scrap all of them and then save a few of them for garage art. Who knows? I think this ATI balancer is probably good. Uh, we've probably got a good set of LS7 roller rockers, good set of push rods. The crank spun like butter. All the journals look absolutely perfect. I mean, the counterweights have some dings and dents from obviously what went through the motor, but there's no heat in it. It didn't get hot. Uh, the journals feel and look absolutely perfect. I. Someone could probably use this. I'd probably want a machine shop to make sure it's still balanced and good to go. But I mean, this this is uh, still in pretty decent shape. So this this might be worth something to someone. Who knows? We'll see. But uh, other than that, I think a lot of this, especially this block, I've always wanted to make one of those coffee table engines. Basically, you think you'd take something like this. It goes a bearing. Stick that on there and then, you know, one on the other side and then you have a piece of glass over the top. So probably save that for a, a project down the road, maybe in the spring or later this winter. Um, you know, this would be fun to drink beers with the boys and talk about this. This is a good storyteller right here, this $15,000 paperweight. So in addition to all this, I've also got all these parts to go through, clean up, Probably get rid of a couple of them. I think we're going to junk the LS7 manifolds. This dry sump oil tank needs to be completely gone through. Make sure it's immaculate. None of this stuff ends up in the new motor. Everything's got to be cleaned up, painted. You guys know the deal. Well, I have made a giant mess, and uh, I'm pretty tired. So I'm going to call this video here. Got a lot done. Not only did we get the motor out of the Z06, but we got it completely broken down just for fun to see exactly what was wrong what might have gone wrong let me know in the comments what you guys think i think that a exhaust valve dropped and caused all this if you guys disagree let me know but uh that's what it's looking like but yeah next up we can prepare the engine bay here and uh get ready for a new engine which i already have on order you guys are not going to want to miss the next video we got a replacement engine on the way for our 2008 z06 this thing is going to have new life in it before you know it. So thank you guys as always for watching. See you in the next one.